afternoon. My name is uh, Dr. Aideen Hunter and I'm from the University of Ulster along with my colleagues um, Dr. Alan McCulley and Dr. Jessica Bates. Uh, thank you very much for inviting um, us here this afternoon and I realise that we're running very far behind and we're all getting to the point where we were regretting we drank so much water. Um, so I will try and keep this as brief and to the point as possible. I'll try and also be as entertaining as I can, but um, you can't hold me to that. Um, okay, so I'm here to present an evaluation of a project called the Primary Integrating and Enriching Education Project, um, which uh, was run through the Northeastern Education and Library Board, and Francis is somewhere in the audience uh, there. Um, who will also um, answer any questions you have specifically about the project. Uh, we conducted the research on the project and evaluation of it, um, so that's what I'm presenting here this morning. So what exactly is PI? Well, PI was a project um, that ran for the past um, four years in the Northeastern Education and Library Board area, so a large area. Um, between primary schools and the focus of the, the project was to increase partnerships cross community um, between small primary schools and the schools that were identified to be part of the project were all of a uh, very small uh, enrolment number so under 105 children so these were small um, schools that had particular um, requirements and particular needs due to their location uh, in rural areas and in, indeed through their size and resourcing. So from the outset the project has focused on partnership and working towards shared education as a goal. So what did we do at the University of Ulster? Well we researched the, the project and the objectives were to gather perceptions of uh, the PI project from a range of stakeholders, ma mainly the principals in the schools involved, the teachers, some members of the boards of governors, and also parents and pupils. We also wanted to explore staff understanding of the partnership model, what did they think the PI project was about, uh, and what were its aims. Also to highlight examples of best practice from the schools, and I'll talk about that in more detail later, and evolving practice um, with a view to transferability to other pro um, schools within the project and for future um, projects. Also, we wanted to, extent, uh, to examine the extent to which staff felt that they had created a shared space um, within the rural community. So we wanted to look at the impact of the PI project on uh, the rural community in which these schools uh, find themselves. Um, also, uh, we wanted to explore the sustainability of the project beyond the life um, of PI and um, to see how that could be facilitated. Okay, so what we did then, um, more specifically, and I'll zip past this because everybody gets a bit tired of methodology, um, we looked at two case study partnerships, so a school um, of, a t of two, uh, partnership of two schools and a partnership of three schools to see if there were any difference in the relationship between a two school model and a three school model. So in total that was a part, uh, case study of five schools and we contextualised that um, later um, looking at the wider population through um, uh, more qualitative uh, research as well. So we interviewed the principals in the schools, we interviewed um, 12 teachers across those schools. Now as I said these are small schools so 12 teachers is actually a, a large representation of the teachers within those schools. Some schools only have two teachers. Um, so, and that includes the principal in that as well. So these are, these are small, small um, schools. So 12 teachers uh, is most of the population within these five schools. Um, and we also interviewed um, representatives of the Board of Governors, many of which are also parents um, in their role as governors as well. And then we uh, also thought that it was vitally important to see what the children's involvement was in their understanding of the project. So we uh, conducted focus groups with P6 and P7 children. Um, we chose that age range because we felt that they had the longest experience and uh, that they would be most articulate in being able to express um, their thoughts and understandings of the project. So that was focus groups again in each of the schools. So in the 2012 then data collection we went back and we did um, that uh, series of data collection again to see if understandings and experiences had developed or changed in any way over another um, ex year's expanse of the project. So again, it was the principals, teachers, um, governors, and again, the pupil uh, focus groups. This time, we added another dimension in terms of um, g garnering information from the parents. 
So we conducted questionnaires with um, the senior children's parents as well. Um, so we had a response rate of 57%, which is, is quite respectable. Um, and we also conducted questionnaires to all the principals and all the teachers in all of the schools involved in the Pi, Pi project. And that's 28 schools um, that were involved um, with this project. So it's, it's quite a, a, a significant project. We um, were awarded then um, another year's um, funding to conduct research into um, shared teachers. Um, through the life of the project of PI, um, one school used their um, funding to employ a shared teacher. So this uh, was an example of good practice and was offered um, to other schools throughout the um, 28 schools that were involved in the project. And most schools um, availed of this. So we wanted to see how schools managed a shared teacher, what they did with them, and um, the legacy um, of shared teachers within this school. So we surveyed the teachers in all the PI schools that had a shared teacher, and all the principals, and um, also the uh, shared teachers, them, the people who were in post as shared teachers as well. And because that was this past year, we're still in the process of evaluating that. Um, so the conclusions that we have drawn um, from the project, some of the findings that we have, our perceptions of the, P the PI project are that it has very strong support from those um, uh, involved in it, from the principals and teachers, governors and parents, all thought that this was a, a good initiative and were very engaged um, with furthering it. Uh, also that the PI model was seen as keeping uh, small rural schools viable. Um, and continuing to um, Im impact on and promote community relations. Um, any project, though, that you would offer these schools would be seen as part of the viability. These are already endangered size schools. So um, that has to be seen in context as well. But definitely PI was seen as, as a way of, of uh, maintaining their viability. Um, teaching staff also valued the collegiality and professional development that the project um, offered. I'll just explain that a little bit more. Um, as I said, some schools, two, two teachers in a school, you're working with the junior classes and you're working with the senior classes. So you haven't anyone else to really talk about, about your key stage, your year group, or indeed your subject specialism. So it's very isolating to work in those schools, although there are many benefits to working in a nice, small uh, rural primary school. Um, so for, this was often the first time these teachers had ever had an opportunity to plan curriculum development, professional development, lesson plans, resources with anyone else that knew about the needs and requirements of children within that age group or subject area. So that was seen as a great benefit um, of the project. Um, also, um, one of the perceptions of the PI project was that pupils' educational experiences were increased because they, they had a new range of resources available to them, both in terms of the physical um, resources that a school would have, in terms of ICT, um, textbooks, um, uh, various physical um, resources, but also in terms of the staffing. Um, Again, I keep referring to the two, one of the two schools, but um, the, the, one of the schools that had two teachers, they were both female. So the male in particular, the male children in that environment had never been taught by a man. And the other school that they were partnershiped with had a male teacher and he was able to come down and do, I'm going to be very sexist, but more, more male things and take them out for football and things like that. So um, that was a benefit in sharing the expertise that the individual teacher had and the children really um, responded well to that and thought that, that was a, well, it was a great benefit. Um, and they also saw it as a very positive move um, towards their social development. They were, we're mainly talking here about P6 and P7 children. They were very aware that they were going to move to post-primary schools. So they were going to go into a post-primary environment where the number of children in their year would have been equivalent to the number of children in their entire school um, previously. And they hadn't had that ability, that experience of making new friendships um, on conflict resolution strategies, things like that, that that other children may have an experience of. So working with the partnership school, they felt that they would um, gain great social experience um, that would help them in moving on through their career. 
Of course, pupils enjoyed all the activities. Some of the things that um, children were involved in in the project were residentials, um, joint sports days, putting on drama productions together, um, working collaboratively on young enterprise type activities. So there were lots, lots of um, hands-on active learning processes that we all know children love. So they enjoyed those um, opportunities very much. Um, also, that parents and school governors were very supportive and keen to see the work continue after the life of the pr project. I'll come back to the impact um, later on um, parents and the wider community. Part of the um, ability to run this project was seen um, to be due to the political change and the decrease in community tension within these areas um, over uh, the last um, 10 to 20 years was seen as, as important to helping PI um, proceed and um, be successful. In terms of understanding of the aims of the project, the concept of sharing was interpreted very flexible, f flexibly. Um, and where PI stands apart from perhaps... Um, previous um, EMU-style projects was the flexibility that schools were offered. They were able to interpret how they um, facilitated sharing, um, the mechanisms for doing so themselves to suit their needs, to suit the needs of their community, and that's what's distinctive about PI. So, in essence, it's a small project, but because um, each school went about facilitating sharing differently. We have lots of different models and examples of best practice um, coming out of this project. So it's not just one um, project, it, it's actually lots of smaller projects that we can extrapolate lots of good practice and lots of um, uh, ideas for the future from as well. A key um, question um, from the research is, was this a passport for survival? Were schools um, mo so very motivated by the fact that they were already in threat um, to take part in this? And there's an implicit and, and sometimes even explicit view that this was sharing and this sharing was very desirable, but it wasn't a step towards integration. So I think of this sort of as, as a, a, a train station with we've traditionally had tracks that run along parallel and they go to different places in terms of Northern Ireland education. Now, have we got a new pathway? Is this the destination of that pathway, this achievement of um, shared education? Or is it um, changing uh, track and going to go on further? So, is there a further destination of integration? Have we reached our destination um, in sharing itself? Or indeed, are we going to turn around and take the return journey home? Um, so there's questions to be asked from the, from the research as well. And there are some indications that um, teachers are starting to become uh, more versed in how to deal with controversial issues in uh, their classrooms. And indeed, PI offered um, training um, for teachers to uh, explore these sorts of issues so there were new skills um, being put out there into the general education uh, population. In terms of best practice, very much driven from uh, the principles and the visionary of principles within um, these schools and taking risks in doing this differently and having different uh, models of um, community relations work that hadn't been tried and tested before. And an example of that is the shared teacher, which we'll come to in a moment. So um, there was a different, uh, there were some different approaches um, to how to go about uh, increasing sharing. And one of the methods was some schools focused on what the children were doing and some schools focused on what the, the teachers were doing. And both of those are legit, very legitimate options. So um, some schools put the focus on staff training, staff development, um, curriculum development and professional development, where other schools worked on bringing the children together and teaching them communally and having lots of um, cross-community contact. So there were different ways of doing this. Now, the, co the concept of the chair teacher um, appeared to be a very significant catalyst in consolidating the partnership at all levels and demonstrating um, its valuable value in a very tangible way. Um, and that's quite a, 
significant move in terms of Northern Ireland where a teacher will spend part of their time teaching in one school in one uh, sector and then spending the rest the other part of their working day working in another sector and indeed bringing those sectors together to be taught jointly that's quite groundbreaking um, so it's quite important uh, to consider that and we'll look at that again in, in a moment in more detail however the termination of the shared teacher and indeed the termination of the PI project and the financial implications for that is of concern for this project. As has often been the case in the past, lots of good work are put into these community relationship, uh, relations programmes for a short period of time. The funding runs out and that good work is lost. And we've had a series of these projects that start and stop and start and stop in Northern Ireland. Um, and it's quite unfair on, on those environments that that's the case because f financial input is really essential for these um, to continue. It doesn't matter all the goodwill in the world. For these very simple logistics, we need uh, to have money invested. In terms of um, rural communities, Children are much more isolated um, than they would be in urban areas where you could take children and walk half a mile to the, next, the nearest school. You can't do that in a country area where roads are narrow and heavy, tra heavy industry on them and things like that. So transport is key but, and that's costly. When your budgets are already stretched, that's very costly. Um, simple things like um, telecommunications and teaching and working together um, through video conferencing, while that's um, a, a very viable option and one we would express um, as a good option for schools to um, pursue. There's issues with broadband connectivity and the infrastructure that is required for that as well. So finance is an issue in terms of the sustainability of the project. In terms of the, the impact on the community, um, the, PI, the PI project and the schools really um, started to integrate the community with one another and break down uh, geographically demarcated space and um, I was a former student of Professor Shuttleworth so I have to get some geography in there. So um, formerly uh, no-go areas for one part of the community started to be broken down in that the schools were putting on a drama production in a a sports venue or a church hall and the other side of the community was invited in that had lived as one of the, my former co uh, presenters said cheek to jowl with these um, uh, spaces they had never ever uh, set foot inside them so this was this was an important um, finding that schools were uh, modeling good citizenship and working together and working on community projects such as um, gardening and um, litter picks and things like that. But they were also um, inviting and um, starting friendships up uh, amongst their elders within the community. So what, um, as I said, we're just in the process of analysing um, the shared teacher findings. And this is some of the things that the shared teacher would have spent their time doing. So this is um, the perception of what the shared teacher did from the principals. So um, two shared teachers, so there were um, 11 partnerships and nine partnerships took a shared teacher. One partnership was dissolved because um, one of the schools was closed due to in, um, insufficient student numbers, so that dissolved one partnership. And another partnership couldn't have a shared teacher because it was an Irish medium school and it was, it was addedly difficult using the, the additional language. So nine out of the 11 partnerships had a shared teacher. Two um, shared teachers spent all of their time communally teaching all of the children together, um, which contrasts with um, two, um, down at the bottom, 0%, two teachers um, who didn't do that at all. So they were used for other legitimate purposes, um, such as uh, ICT curriculum development, PDMU, um, numeracy and literacy support, special educational needs support, or in terms of releasing other members of staff um, so that they could facilitate um, 
furthering the pie project. So there's a range um, in terms of, of how the, the shared teachers were used within these schools. Um, okay. So emerging issues then from the research. This is where I really want to get to. So you're, you're, you're in the last leg. Bear with me a little longer. Um, shared teach, uh, teachers approached, uh, as with everything in this project, very flexibly in how they interpreted the role of sharing. There was an emphasis on the shared dimension um, varied within schools, and there was an evidence of um, lots of good uh, practice and, and examples of best practice in terms of sharing that could be extrapolated for um, the Northern Ireland population as a whole. Um, also, there was a demonstration of um, the enhanced educational experiences for, ch for children and um, also of cross-community engagement within the, the locale that the school was based in. In terms of sustainability, we have that issue of finance, as I've already uh, discussed. In terms of transport, also an important um, element was, in term, was to do with planning time. Where Remember I said that they had uh, earlier that they, um, teachers valued having someone to work with and to do curriculum planning with? Well, that often was outside of their working day. And as uh, those of you who are not... In, engaged in education, I can assure you teachers work very long and very hard days um, and this was often after school hours and they felt that that wasn't respectful for their um, profession and also um, an exhausting demand to have this after um, the working day. So time um, given discreetly to do that planning was important. Um, some uh, members within the schools were absolutely stoically determined um, that this would go on regardless of having funding and had developed real and meaningful friendships um, across the community. Um, so it will go on in some form, uh, definitely in some partnerships and will m more likely uh, face difficulties in others. Um, okay, so further recommendations that we have are that the success of the PIE project should be factored into de uh, Department of Education policy in its regard to rural schools and the CRED policies that are um, currently out. Also, funding um, is allocated to rural schools should take account of the, spe the specific needs of rural schools and um, the savings that are associated with partnerships. So when a school requires an additional teacher, and they can't afford an additional teacher, perhaps two or three schools in a similar situation can pull their finances together to pay for one person. Um, funding should be sought to pursue the shared teacher on a larger scale to enable it to be properly evaluated. We would like to, um, to evaluate further the legacy of um, the PIE project in schools now that it has terminated and the legacy of the shared teachers now that they are um, no longer paid for as well. And obviously, we need, as I said, we need the continued funding for transport um, for the partnerships to be successful. Rural schools should be given priority in the allocation of interactive technologies because video conferencing and uh, video links um, through various programmes like uh, Dissolving Boundaries that we would offer at the University of Ulster um, are definitely uh, one strand uh, of continuing uh, good community relations but would not be sufficient um, as a full program. Resources for staff planning meetings, as I said, are critical and opportunities for governors and parents to meet and cooperate because this was on an ad hoc basis um, through the um, schools initiatives and more, more deep and meaningful connections could be made there to have a greater cross-community impact. So I'll just leave up the final word um, there while we have our questioning session, is that right? It's coming up now, um, of some of the questions that, and statements that have, been, that have come out of the research from um, teachers and pupils. Okay, thank you very much for your time. You can all breathe a big sigh of relief. It's over.